process of selling one of our investment properties, and we're having a bit of a disagreement over the price because my attitude is the market is based on where I can sell the property. It's got nothing to do with the last sale. Uh, because, for example, uh, when the market is spiking upwards, like it did over here, uh, you know, the last sale may have been at 99, or 9770, but that doesn't mean that, that because you bought it at 9770 that you're going to be able to sell it at 9771, okay? There's no guarantee of that. So the market is based on where a buyer and a seller can connect. So... In essence, you have moved the market down to 150,000 and then even as low as 140,000. Now, the market may instantaneously move right back up, but the fact of the matter is you've moved the market down. So, just like, just, just as in that example, the market maker has an incentive to move price if they see that there are orders here that will help to push the market up. So if the market maker sees that he's got an order to somebody's out there willing to uh, buy 100 lots and then another person's willing to buy 500 lots, they are willing to push the market down, which means they're moving it down here in order to fill these orders because they know it can move the price up. Now, you gotta, you got to follow me here. Why are they willing to do that? Well, they're willing to do that because they have, they have an opportunity to then take advantage of this gap here in the order, process, in the, in the order book. Okay? So they're pushing the market lower, just like you would push the market lower to 150 or 140 if you knew that in the wings were these people willing to buy from you at higher prices. So the market maker has an incentive to push the market down, get these orders done, and then watch the market move up. Because the next layer of selling is up here, it's pretty weak. There's weak selling in here, and he knows that, wow, you know, the market's not going to really run into trouble until I get up here. So in the meantime, the market maker, as the market pushes up, is making money on a, on a few of the buy orders, but he has the ability to mark price up because he knows there's no one to get in the way of his buying. So as the market moves up, the market maker is going to try and buy. He's going to try and buy a little bit more, but each consistently moving the price higher, higher, and higher. Okay? And, and again... This is a very rough overview. There, there are some market dynamics which uh, can affect this, but you know, this, isn't, uh, this isn't Market Maker 101. I'm not trying to train you to go out and be a market maker. Just understand that in this, in this instance, the market maker would have an incentive to actually get, dip into his or her pocket and spend some money in order to move the market. Now, what do I mean by they have to spend money? Let me go ahead and erase all this. Well, remember, if a market maker is going to move price, they can't just, you know, they really just can't move the price. They're going to have to actually buy or sell because there are people sitting out there with orders. Okay, if, if there just weren't any orders, then the price would be very jumpy. If you've ever seen a chart where you have a price here and then a price here, a price here, one over here, if, if you see it jumping around like this where there's just not a lot of activity, that simply means that there are no orders in between these prices, and the market maker can just jump price around uh, pretty much wherever he or she wants. Okay, and in a liquid market, that can't happen. And the reason why it can't happen is because there are orders all through here, just up and down, all the way through here. There are order after order. Pardon me. Had to get a drink. So they can't just put push price down. So if, if the market maker is, is wanting to get price down here because they, they know that there are some big orders, and I'll put B-O, big orders down here <laughs> that will have...